Good morning to my friends and family and welcome to this episode of my Greek Orthodox Odyssey. And what I want to do today is go on a small journey and to talk about something quite profound that I learned just the other day that helped me join a number of dots of understanding uh, within my religion, within my Christian religion, within my Greek Orthodox religion, those dots that I hadn't quite been able to join together before, but I follow a Greek Orthodox monk who lives in Greece. He runs a monastery but he also has a vlog channel uh, called Yeron Nectarios. And uh, he talks about various elements of the faith. He does it in Greek. And thankfully, I can speak Greek. I can understand Greek. I'm not perfect at it, but my understanding is well enough to be able to um, make sense of what he's saying and to process it in a way that is productive and uh, helps me with uh, I guess with practicing my faith but also living learning and passing it on so what he talked about in this very very short video it was only five minutes long and yet the message, as I said, was profound and quite revealing. He talked about Apocrius. It's a period in Greece, a party period, which happens just before Lent. Apocrius is a Greek word which means, which it's a compound or a, a word which is made up of two words, apo which means to separate from meat to stop eating meat and it's the period that happens in the I think it's a couple of weeks leading up to clean Monday um, where um, Greek Orthodox Lent commences and what happens is that in the week leading up to this uh, beginning of Lent, there is a period which is called Kreatini, which means we stop eating meat. What I love about the Greek Orthodox faith is that there are preparation periods leading to preparation periods. So the Greek Orthodox Lent, the fasting period is quite strict. But uh, in order to get to this um, period of fasting, what we do is we have a week of indulge, uh, indulging where you can eat meat, dairy and everything. And then this week, um, the Apocrius week, is where you stop eating meat, but you continue to indulge in all other activities and you often say well you know yes it's good to be able to phase in one's fasting but what Yeron Nectarios was able to share with me through this video and I can share with you is that there are deeper meanings as to why the church has selected to do it this way um, there are two words that we use constantly and yet a lot of people don't understand the meaning behind the words. There's the word festival and the word carnival and these are words that have evolved through the Latin language and festival means to break fast, to eat 
uh, and to indulge and to party, whereas carnival is a period before fasting and carnival is of course the separation from meat just like the Greek word apokrias apokrias is the same word to go without eating meat but why is it important why is it important to us Christians to understand the deeper meaning of this and it goes back to the Old Testament to a significant biblical event um, uh, um, which occurred in Genesis where and I'll explain it as best I can um, but not technically using the exact words in the Old Testament because uh, I don't have those words with me at the moment, but I'll just try and articulate it as clearly as possible. But uh, what happened in the Old Testament is that uh, God created uh, the Garden of Eden where everything was perfect, it was paradise. And of course he created Adam and from Adam he created Eve, uh, but he created mankind differently to what he created everything else. Everything else was created through a command. Uh, the word of God commanded the, the sky, the planets, the sun, the moon, uh, the forests, the greens, the oceans the fish, the animals, everything else to come into being. Whereas when it came to the creation of mankind, God handcrafted Adam from clay, from soil, hence why we are called human, uh, from the word humus, which means soil. So we come and we were handcrafted by God and then God gave us the kiss of life where he gave us a spirit, he gave us his spirit. So man is different from the animal kingdom uh, because we have a human rational soul, an intelligent soul and as we say we were created in the image of God and when we say we're created in the image of God what we're created in is we're created with elements with parts of his virtues of course God has unlimited infinite um, amounts and capacity with all of the virtues all of the good things and each and every one of us are created with small, very, very small portions of each of the virtues that we can live, we can express, we can share within our lifetimes. So where am I heading with this? Where I'm heading with this is that God created paradise, created, created the Garden of Eden, he created Adam, he created Eve and he basically told them you are to enjoy all the fruits of this Garden of Eden uh, you are to be a steward to name and look after the animals look after the environment make the most of it and it's here for your personal it's here for your enjoyment enjoy everything do whatever you want, enjoy everything, eat everything, but all I want of you is to fast from a particular thing, to not do one thing, and that one thing was not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So Adam and Eve 
the first two people, the first two married people, the first people to have a family. They lived a thousand years or so. They had nine children. And from those nine children, um, the children, the families, the people of the world came into being. They were our original and first parents, the source of mankind. So he told them, enjoy. Now this is all yours, enjoy, eat as much as you want of whatever you want, but don't eat from a particular tree. And as we know, um, Adam and Eve, uh, through the temptations of uh, Satan and the demons, um, fell, fell and ate from the tree that God told them not to eat from. So mankind was called to fast from the very beginning. So a lot of people say, oh, why should I fast? It's just, no, it doesn't make sense. It's not important, but it is important. It was important to God and it was important to Adam and Eve. And they failed that first test. They failed the original fast. And what has happened is in order for us to remember that, in order for us to commemorate that, in order for us to lament what happened back then, what happens is this week in the Greek Orthodox Church, we have Apocrius and this week culminates in a service on Sunday, which once again commemorates the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden because they failed, they, um, they fell in sin, they were separated from God because they wanted to have the knowledge of good and evil. And and from that point on, mankind suffered the many first, second and third level consequences, which led to our death, led to our suffering and led to our um, temporal lives where we got to live, um, endure the ups and downs of this world and this life and then die and then, of course, uh, wait for the second co coming where hopefully, prayerfully, we'll be resurrected and spend the rest of our days, eternity, our eternal lives in paradise, the uh, original paradise uh, recreated for our enjoyment. So what happens is that this week from a fasting perspective, we are encouraged to do whatever we want. This week is one of the rare weeks, weeks throughout the year where Greek Orthodox Christians do not require to fast on Wednesday and Thursday. Just so you're aware, and a lot of people don't understand this, but Greek Orthodox Christians have held the fast from the day of the apostles where on Wednesday and Friday they hold and keep a strict fast um, prior to the um, Pentecost and the resurrection of Jesus the Jews would fast two days a week they were different days I think they were Mondays and Thursdays but the Greek Orthodox the uh, apostles decided to fast on Wednesday and Friday to remember, to commemorate and to lament the Wednesday which was the betrayal of Jesus 
by Judas Iscariot and on Friday of course where they, they put Jesus to the cross and the day that he died. So we were always called to fast from the very very beginning. So what happens this week with the Apocrius is and you see it throughout the world it's party season you know in uh, Rio de Janeiro they have Mardi Gras um, in Greece we have Apocrius where people get dressed up in colorful outfits and they indulge they eat they drink but they are called to fast from one thing and one thing only to eliminate one thing from their diet and that is meat so this week traditionally and a lot of people don't understand this of course um, people don't eat meat but they're allowed to eat everything else in whatever quantities they want and to do whatever they want and as we said there is no fasting period this week which is really unusual and really unique but the reason why you're allowed to do everything else except eating meat is so that we can commemorate we can remember we can relive uh, the commandment that God presented to Adam and Eve eat of all the trees eat of all the fruits in paradise except the one thing and for us we are allowed to eat everything except one thing and that one thing is meat and that one thing meat represents the tree of knowledge of good and evil so as i say it's a preparatory period which lead us leads us into uh, uh, lent and the greek orthodox celebrate lent a little bit differently from the west from the catholic church there are 40 days of strict fast which prepare us for holy week so last sunday was the last day that i ate meat and it will be 55 days before i get to indulge in meat again which will be easter sunday and it'll be 49 days i think or 40 48 days where i don't eat dairy uh, eggs and other things so from this monday coming it will be a strict fast for me but it helps me it helps me on my spiritual journey but it also helps me on my physical journey because i've learned that science now informs us that intermittent fasting is critical for our our health system and if you were to follow the greek orthodox fasts throughout the year there's the fast for easter there's a fast for christmas there's a fast for the dormition of the virgin mary and there's an apostles fast as well as the monday uh, as, as well as sorry as well as the wednesday friday fast so if you add it up and calculated all the fasts throughout the year what you will find is that the greek orthodox fast for well over half of the year and as i said science now informs us that these intermittent fasts these strict fasts that are kept at different times of the week or different times of the year actually do good for our, our health, for our system, for our, um, you know, our ability to recreate and to look after ourselves. So um, something to consider. Now it's not just a rule that's been given by God to mankind for no reason. It actually has a health benefit that we can all reap, we can all gain from. Anyway, thank you very much 
for indulging me on this uh, day. I was going to do a vlog, but I couldn't find the notes that I'd put together earlier this week. So I, th I thought it would be good just to improvise and I'm kind of